So when we talk about the statement of work, in simple term, we need to understand that uh, in, in our understanding capability, we can clearly make out that SOW is a sort of implementation process, okay? So the business organization will be having no idea about the process parameters and the work that needs to be delivered by the consultant, okay? It's, it's only the deliverables, it's only the deliverables they know. They know the end result. So the company knows the end result and they just need the end result. However, they don't just sit idle until, until the end uh, point arrives. So they will be reviewing, okay? They'll be reviewing uh, uh, on a consistent basis, on a constant uh, time interval or consistently, they will, be, they will be monitoring the project, okay? So that's, that's why it's, it's the deliverables and the milestones that, that are set there, okay? So it's, it's a formal document. What SOW means, it's a formal document. It's a contract that captures and defines the work activities, deliverables, timeline, a vendor must execute in performance of specified work for the customer. Okay, it is just a contract that explains what needs to be done. So out of this, uh, we can monitor the budget through the SOW. We can track the headcount for each SOW. There will be a whole lot. For example, if it is a field class implementation, company, the service company says that this is what the requirement is. This is what the human resource that we require. This is what the software that we require, so on and so forth. So we can track that. Time, time will be submitted through field glass, time and expense. So uh, we can keep the contract uh, dates as well as the workers' dates. So the worker under SOW, each one will be having a work order created. But once they onboard, work order will be created. In the, on, in the process of onboarding, a work order will be created. So we can ensure the change control processes are followed in the sense if there is any changes as such, we can incorporate that and it will be applicable for the list of contractors that are working. So invoices can be automated. Okay, so these are the advantages that we see out of uh, SOW. So the important terms are like in you know, SOW types. These are defined. This defines the setting rules and characteristics in the sense SOW types is the option where we are going to configure the SOW. That's the starting point to configure the SOW. That's where the complete setting rules and characteristics for individual purchasing characters will be incorporated, okay? Then the SOW templates. We spoke something about SOW template yesterday. We are gonna complete that today, okay? Clauses, what does that mean? The legal terminologies, company-wide specifications, so on. So clauses just explains the legal terminologies for that region, and company's requirement. Company's requirement in the sense, company's legal requirement. Okay, it's not the deliverables requirement. So management events, it's, these, are, these are like, uh, as, uh, as I said, they're gonna, they're gonna review every now and then. They're, gonna they're not gonna just sit idle that, okay, someone is looking into it. We don't have to worry until the end they'll review. So those kind of meetings, reviews can be considered as management events. Even the requirement gathering sessions the service company conducts with uh, the clients can be considered as management events okay. and schedules. So schedules are like, you know, if they wanna pay, if they, if they decide to pay, 
on a regular basis, say for a month or for a quarter or so on, irrespective of uh, what's been delivered by that time. Then schedules are maintained. And for each SWW, the maximum budget can be maintained. Okay, so the maximum budget can be maintained in the master SOW. So that is a master contract. By that, we can even create the child contract. So when we create the child contract, it inherits the data from the master. Okay, events. Uh, events are like, Events are like to be the deliverables that they have decided. Okay, when it should start. When the, for, for example, if it is an implementation, uh, project preparation, planning and preparation, business blueprint, and then requ requirement gathering, and then the business blueprint, so on. These are the events. These are considered as the events. Fees, uh, fees includes uh, the bill amount. Uh, it also includes uh, the assets that's being provided for that particular project. Okay, so and then the SOW workers, um, the service company will be adding the SOW workers into the SOW when once they're good with the terms. This is uh, the typical uh, workflow, a typical workflow of SOW. Okay, so uh, RFX can be done within field class. Even they can do it outside the field class. They can do it in Hariba or uh, uh, they can do any, anywhere outside the field class and then create the SOW. That's one of the options. The other one is this. This is the complete uh, overview of the workflow. Okay, RFX is called as a request for a proposal or request for quotation. X stands. X can be replaced with any letter. A request for quotation is like you know they're gonna give the requirement. A company is gonna give the requirement to a service company, and service company evaluates it and quotes. So this RFX can be distributed uh, in numerous, to numerous companies, service companies, and then uh, they're gonna review it. It's, it's PMO or the approval, you know, if they have got, uh, if they have got uh, something like uh, MSP, managed service providers, if it is outsourced to manage the hiring process, then it's gonna PMO who's gonna approve it. And the suppliers will submit the responses. Then the evaluation process goes. And there will be numerous uh, responses out of it. They're gonna select one best. By that, they create the SOW. Uh, if there's any negotiation as such, they're gonna go ahead and do that on top of it. And then accept the SOW, so supplier will accept the SOW. Once accepted, uh, it will be approved by the PMO and onboarding process begins. Uh, workers will submit the time and expense if it is enabled or the suppliers will mark it as complete. In the sense, these are the deliverables. These can be set as milestones. Okay, if it is, if it is just the events, or if it is, as as I explained, if it is the events or schedules, according to the schedules they are going to pay, or with respect to the events they are going to pay. Okay, so under events we even have got the milestones the completion of milestones once the milestones are completed they're going to release the payments 
transaction needs to be marked by the supplier by that the company the contracting company gonna approve it and submit the invoices once approved the invoices will be generated the invoices will be generated you know uh, it's it's uh, the supplier in the supplier interface the invoices will be generated the same invoices will be visible in the buyer's uh, interface as well so buyer's interface it 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 it, uh, it will be integrated uh, the the invoices will be pushed to the other systems so finally it has to go to erp and then the matching process begins against the PO, PR, and then the uh, accounts payable will pay it. When once paid, uh, the same thing will be updated in the updated back to the bill plus. Okay. So these are the uh, typical. Uh, uh, this is a comprehensive overview of uh, the workflow. This is something which we have to understand about the SOW templates. So how SOW templates are established? It starts with master SOW. So the purpose for this master SOW is to give the buyer the ability to create a master contract with the supplier, okay? The master contract include all the agreed upon contractual terms uh, that will be in effect throughout each child SOW, you know, if, if at all. The master SOW is not a transaction document. Master SOW is just a master contract. When once the master SOW is created, the child SOW needs to be created. Okay. So so master SOW forms a very important factor. Master SOW with respect to each project needs to be created. Template is something which is a generalized view of a master SOW. Okay, template is something which consists of everything as per the buyer's requirement. Okay, so out of it, they can carry that to create the child SOW. So while creating the child SOW, if they want to edit something, they can do that as per the configuration. Okay, so master SOW can include it's it's not must and should can include clauses management events fees and sw workers okay it can but it's not must and should but yes normally clauses are maintained because clauses will be uh, the regional law as well as the company's uh, requirement company's uh, law the clauses will be maintained as it is. Management events might differ based upon the project. Fees might differ based upon the project and the SOW workers. Okay, so these are like uh, in the in the template, we are gonna maintain so much. And while creating the master SOW, they can create, they can add on all this stuff. Once created, out of it, many child SOW can be created. Okay. So a standard template. Okay, see when it comes to the master SOW template. So we just need a very less configuration. So very less configuration is required. When it comes to <clears throat> The CW that inherits the data from the master template. Okay. So the custom templates can also be built. So custom templates uh, that 
that can be copied from the master SOW template and customized. Okay. So whenever we are uh, creating the master SOWs, so it's, it's like uh, we are gonna incorporate all the common set of configuration there. Okay, by that, CSW can be, <clears throat> can inherit the data. Okay, so CSW will normally be dependent on the master SOW template. So the SOW, we have got uh, two types, master SOW and child SOW. We have also got something called standalone SOW. A standalone SOW is something which you have to create from scratch. Okay, so it will not be dependent on the master SOW template. However, if we enable the option to copy from any of the master or child SOW, that can be copied from standalone data. Uh, the, the data that is uh, residing in the master or child SOW template can be copied to the standalone SOW. So a standard on SWs will be used uh, because if it is if it is something right away from uh, the master SWW template that's been created, the templates that's been created altogether in the system. So then uh, we use the standalone SWW. So while we are creating the uh, master SOW, we need to make sure that we need to make sure that how we segregate amounts, okay? If it is single template, or if we are doing a multiple template creation in the master, okay? So if it is a single template, you know, if, if it is required for just one country, we're, they're using very minimal amount of usage. Uh, very, so they're giving very narrow scope to the field class. Some companies doesn't need much of a use of SOW module. So some companies might extensively use SOW module, okay? So when, when a company is not utilizing the, the SOW module much, a single template is fair enough for them. A single master template would be fair enough. If, if that is configured out of it, they can create the child templates using those. Whereas when they are extensively using uh, the SOW module, we need to have multiple templates based upon the countries, based upon the different roles, so on and so forth. Okay. So by that, uh, So by that, we need to have multiple templates. So in fact, uh, as I explained to you, there are two factors. One is the countries and the other one is the classification. Classifications are like a uh, different kind of projects that they are looking, on, looking upon, okay? Okay, so again, uh, it's, it's uh, there is something called commodity code. Okay. There is something called commodity code in ERP. So there will be various uh, commodity codes. However, it's, uh, it's only the commodity code that is required for service procurement will be maintained in the field class. So we are, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you where, where what is happening within the system. So I'm just explaining you. Where before we go there. Okay. So characteristics. When it comes to the characteristics, 
uh, no doubt we spoke about this yesterday, SOW worker. It, it is a supplier who is going to identify and uh, load the worker, attach the worker to the SOW. So we are going to, we can make it mandatory or optional, but uh, recommended to make it mandatory. Okay, so we yeah, have taken an example of SOW IT consulting template because that is quite familiar for us. And uh, SOW hardware and networking template. So hardware and networking is, is one of the one of the domain, one of the projects, I would say. Third party services is another one. So when it when it comes to SOW third party services, we can keep it optional because it's it's completely third party who is doing it. Uh, even uh, the buyer is not going to review what is uh, happening in the sense uh, what is completed, what is not. Uh, it's like a support project, I would say. Okay, they're going to review the performance, but. Uh, it's it's not the performance on which the payments are processed. These are called as third party services. Or I would say, for example, field class. From field class, the services will be rendered. Okay. It's not uh, any service company who is implementing it, it's field class, SAP field class altogether. So they are gonna do, they are gonna render the service. We don't know from who is from SAP working. You write a ticket to SAP field class, somebody picks it up and works on it. We don't know who does that. So someone as a customer representative will be assigned to any of the companies. You go to any of the companies here, yeah, one of the person will be assigned to look into things for some of the companies. So he will be will be the face for that client. So we don't need uh, those information. We don't know how, who is picking up the ticket. We don't know who is the face. Even if we don't know who is the face, that's not, a, that's not matters. We should be knowing it, but SOW doesn't need to know. Yeah, those kind of uh, services are called as third-party services. So we spoke about this uh, events, uh, management events. I. I did it there. I have done this because let's not uh, waste time. Okay, so management events or deliverables. Okay, based on which the payments will be made to the supplier. So it is indirectly linked with the payment to the supplier. Okay, so now. Uh, when it comes to schedules, yeah, we discussed about this. Uh, it's the understanding between the buyer and the supplier based on which some scheduling for payment will be done. So this is uh, different from the events. Okay, so events are like when once certain milestones or work is completed, events. Whereas when it comes to schedules, it is like flat monthly or quarterly or bi-monthly payments. Okay. Fees is the understanding between what is the fee that needs to be paid and the rate that needs to be paid. Okay. So that's, uh, that's the fee. The fee is, uh, fee should be utilized whether it is schedule or whether it is management events. Yeah, management events has uh, nothing to do with uh, payments, events. Okay. And uh, templates will be highly specific in nature. Templates will be highly specific in nature because the templates are used for specific reasons for specific projects. Okay, so it, uh, 
a, a support project template cannot be used for the implementation project. Yes. And uh, an implementation project cannot be used for a third party support project. So it doesn't make sense. And hence, it is very specific. So here, what we do for the specifications, we make sure the characteristics, SQW characteristics alone can be kept as mandatory. The rest can be optional. Okay, so we recommend that. However, if uh, the company wants it to be something else, we can do that as well. So when it is a highly specific characteristic needs to be mandatory, when it is general in nature, we can, we can make it even as for W characteristics as optional. Okay. So general or specific, that needs to be known to the user who is using the templates. Okay. So the custom fields can be added. Uh, the custom fields are very important, you know, that be, that is based upon the uh, buyer's requirement. So based upon the buyer's requirement, we can add the custom fields. So no doubt we have got uh, most of the requirements in the uh, just give me a minute. Okay. So we will be having uh, most of the field uh, built in. Those are the built in fields from uh, field class. And uh, on top of built in fields, we have got something called the custom fields. Okay, custom fields is something which we are creating while we are implementing as per the buyer's requirement. Okay, so when, uh, for example, uh, by default, field class might give a field called SSO ID, the single sign on ID. However, companies might use the other IDs for the credentials as credentials to the employees or the contractors rather. Okay, so when they use uh, a different uh, fields or when they use uh, the different uh, identities, credentials to log into the system, then we need to create some custom fields. For example, if it is, a, if by default, SSO ID is there if they want to add on something called company's email address. Personal email address is a built-in field by default comes in. If they need to add a company's email address field, then we need to add the custom field there. Okay, that's, that's one of the examples. We'll be having a whole lot of requirements as per the requirement, we can go ahead and create the custom fields. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how we do it. I'm just explaining. Let's let's go ahead and uh, try that once.
so it would be boring for you guys just to hear the theory so let's see this okay so we saw about all these things you know if, if we go to the sow type we find the different types of sow that's been created this is where the sw template creation starts okay so they have they have called it as sourcing so we have got the template configuration here okay so under the template configuration we have got many of the fields that we discussed many of the fields that we have discussed UNSP SC code, it's, this is the code from the ERP that is exclusively for uh, the external, external workforce hiring. So it is defined by buyer and supplier. It can be defined by buyer alone. So when they keep it as defined by buyer alone, what they do is they're not gonna send the RFX, the request for quotation, so on and so forth. Request for quotation or uh, request for uh, proposal will, uh, will be happening uh, right outside the field class when once they finalize the contract, that's when they are gonna create. So that will be completely defined by the buyer. Supplier has no authority to make the changes. He can, he can just accept or reject they are the project that comes in, the SWW that comes in. So defined by, will it be locked? Yes, it is locked. So these are locked. So when it is locked, we cannot make any changes. Okay. And uh, this one, is this hidden? So you cannot see this, okay? It is there, but you cannot see it. The user cannot see it, or the supplier cannot see it, okay? So these are something which is required at the ERP level. So is it a master SWW template? It is locked. Associate all business units. Creator can change at ad, ad, adjustment group, yes or no. Okay, so all this stuff is like, you know, it is hidden. Adjustment group is not hidden, it's not locked. We can make the, we can see that, but we cannot make the changes. As creator has been set to not adjust. Okay, so define clauses and characteristics. Everything is set to optional. Okay, so they are not using any specific in uh, requirement. So they are using all general in requirement. Here comes the SOW rules. Okay, so most of the SOW rules will be hidden because template will be completely filled with the information. Who is, uh, who will, uh, who will like that to so just go on reading everything. So they're gonna hide most of the things that is not required. Okay. So on with uh, these are uh, the complete SOW rules. By default, it comes in. So we need to set the requirements accordingly. So while you're creating, you can create the type. You can create the template font. See, this is the configuration of a template, not the creation of the template. Okay. 
see this this is something which we have to do way before creation of a template okay this is the type this is the sow type under which you are going to create and set the rules as per the requirement okay so for this you need to get the required info the requirements from the buying organization to which we are implementing okay so it is to set things or to create things it is uh, not a big deal we can go ahead we can create okay this is just the configuration as per the configuration the templates that's been assigned to will work combine details clauses characteristics step if you want yes you can make it yes if not no okay and then so these are some of the custom fields that you want to lock it or unlock that's completely left to the buying company unspc code this is this is coming from erp it is it is optional if you want to lock it you can lock it defined by whom you define to it's it's buyer and supplier or is it only the buyer that is in the description of the buying company defined by can it be locked on the statement of work in the sense now we can say buyer and supplier can that be changed in the statement of work yes or no that is the requirement from the buyer so when once we gather the information we have got all the information right here to implement that so is this master sw template yes or no so when it is master we get hello when child sw budget exceeds the master sw budget so there are certain things which as a consultant we need to let them know in the sense you know all this stuff will not be known to the will not be known to the buying company so we as a consultant will be explaining we are going to first understand what they want what they have in mind but we are going to recommend what is best for the business by understanding the business yeah so allow when child sw exceeds the master sw budget it is something which we don't recommend we go ahead and set it to prevent when the child sw because that is for the internal control in the budgeting but is it used to create non billable statement of work so when we set it as a non billable if we set it as non billable there is uh, there is no payment part coming into the picture okay associate all the business units is it is it required or not is sw being used across business units creator can change that miss adjustment group can he do it or not as this adjustment group is is something which creator should not be able to do if they are working on a specific template if not yes they can change it if it is for the general purpose so we have got the clauses and characteristics clauses and the characteristics okay in the template uh, the definition we do we have to use it or not we can define it in the template as well even if it is not been set or even if it is not been configured right here okay so for example if it is clauses 
we can set it to optional. If we set it to optional, the clauses can be used or cannot be, can even not be used. So the, it, it depends upon the requirements again. And the management events. So we can even set it to do not use completely. When we set it to do not use, there will be no usage at all altogether. If it is set to optional, for most of the companies, you know, clauses will be a mandatory part for the specific projects, for specific templates, it is mandatory. And for some, uh, the general purpose, we can make it optional. Management events, it's like, you know, if they are using it, they can. So we can keep it under optional. Schedules, it depends upon how they are making the payments. Is it based on schedules or is it based on events? Fees, do we need to mention it in SOW? Yes, that can be set as mandatory or it can be set to optional when they're creating non-billable SOWs as well. Okay, so then the SOW workers, SOW workers should be kept to the mandatory. SOW rules. So we, we were talking about this and uh, yes, if you see this in the system, you will get an idea of the complete SOW rules that we have got. So this allow approval of items when maximum budget is exceeding. This is, this is one of the things which we have to set it to yes, to have the internal control in the budgeting. So the maximum budget is exceeding. Is it exceeding for the SOW that's been created or is it exceeded for the cost object altogether? So that depends upon the buyer's requirement. So auto respond normally set to no. Skip collaboration. So collaboration is something when we add the collaborator, so the creator creates the SOW. Collaborator is someone who can review it. For those reviewing purpose, we add the collaborator. So by adding the collaborator, the collaborator comes into the picture, he reviews it and post his approval itself. The proceedings moves further. Auto calculate the maximum budget should be set to yes. This is something which is uh, field class providing. So the maximum budget is like, you know, it combines all the child SOWs budget in the master SOW, by, by created by the master SOW tablet. Okay. Surpass budget amount from supplier. So the, the, the budget amount from supplier is like, you know, this, the supplier uh, in the request for quotation, he provides a budget. Can we surpass that? Or is it, is it okay to surpass that for the buyer? We need to get that understanding. Hello, assistance for SOW creation is like, when we, we can set it to yes, it is the assistance by the MSPs. If they don't want in the creation process to involve us for the MSP team, then it's set to no. Can the discount be defined in the SOW? Can we allow multiple suppliers, allow multiple currencies? So SOW revision approval are required only when the maximum budget is increased. Normally, SOW revision needs to be 
we need to have the approval. That's what we are gonna we are gonna rec we are gonna recommend them to have because as where well, your revision happens if they have want to have their internal control over what is happening. So everything needs to go to the approval when it is revised. Yes, it has to go to the approval. Surplus SPW revision should be kept to know. Allow suppliers to initiate a st statement of work revision. It should be set to know. Though it is uh, buyer and supplier, defined by buyer and supplier, it should be in the hands of buyer to make the changes like right? revisions okay so that should be set to no so there are certain things which we recommend and there are certain things which we need to get the we need to get the understanding from the buying company okay so SWW revision approval required only when the maximum budget is increased. Allow supplier to specify. Yeah, supplier can do this. Plant on the line item. So why he can do this is because supplier is one who is serving for that particular site. Okay, a particular site might contain numerous locations. Auto invoice all the characteristics, timesheet, expense sheet. We recommend it to yes. If it is a billable project that they are doing. Can supplier change the amount prior to the invoicing, the schedule? That should be set to no. Some can set to can reduce. Uh, many of the companies will not agree for can reduce or increase. Okay, supplier can reduce, but it cannot increase. That's what companies try to go with. Okay, so. Can supplier create multiple events from the single event? Uh, not a problem to set it to yes. Okay, it is the events. Uh, it is it is completely left to the supplier to have the multiple events from the single event. That's not a problem because each event that's been created is very important for the buyer. The multiple events, the sub events that have been created by the single event, uh, one particular event, it, it doesn't matter. It is for uh, it is to simplify the the service company is trying to simplify the event and they are trying to accomplish the task. So that is not a problem for the buying company. Used hierarchical events, yes, can be used. See, this is this is something which uh, just simplifies the deliverables for the supplier and yeah it is it is understandable to the buyer as well so enable hold back so this hold back is like you know it is normally set to no It's normally set to no because it is like holding back the SOW completely. Okay, so it is um, normally set to no in many cases, but some of the companies, they might express that, okay, there are chances that we can hold back. There are more chances that we can hold back. That's when it is set to yes. And all this uh, locks over here, and this hide or unhide in the template can be done. 
Okay, so we're now with the form and the details. So that's that's the template configuration. Uh, form and the details in the template configuration is this. Creator defines as what of your name. Yes or no. Uh, SOW name, normally what happens is like uh, in some cases from the master SOW template, they're going to inherit. It should be normally set to yes because they will be creating to the different projects. If it is a specific one, not a problem as template will be created from the template uh, they inherit. If it is a standalone or if it is a general purpose SOW, then it should be defined as yes. Okay, so name should, whether the name should be seen or it should be locked or not. This option just enables or disables it. So it should be locked. Description should be locked. And defined by can be seen. Description should be seen. Name is must and should, and hence we don't have the option to hide it. Okay. Descriptions even can be seen, but some of the companies might want to hide it. Okay. So buyer reference multiple classifications, plans. See, these are all the things which we can hide it or even lock it. Okay, so the accounting part. So when it comes to the accounting part, you have got, we have got all the accounting stuff here that starts from the maximum budget. whether it needs to be locked or not, you know, when it is locked, it is very certain that you're not gonna make any changes to it. So when it is not, you can make the changes. Budgets, normally they'll, they'll try to lock it. If they lock it, they're gonna revise it if at all, if they wanna make the changes. Okay, will that be seen in the SWW or not can be decided as continuous with the SOW coordinators can be added from the buying company. So we have got now the rules, the rules that can be set that we, that we spoke about. So these rules uh, will completely define how the SOW process being designed. Okay, say so how SOW process can be designed in, in completely, in, uh, in incomplete terms. So suppress budget from suppliers, SOPA, suppress budget from budget amount from supplier, allow use of fees with workers, allow suppliers to select approvers or events, how to respond. So the, these are all the things that, uh, that's the normal rules that needs to be set within the SWW. Can supplier submit absences. So whether these, these, these rules needs to be seen or not, and whether this needs to be locked or not is something which we have to decide based upon the requirement. But it is self-explanatory. We can understand what can be done and what not. Okay, so whenever you get any of the things that's been not correct, It says the name field cannot be locked when the creator defines the SWW name is set to yes. 
So when creator defines the SOW, it's set to yes. If the name is locked, they, he cannot make the changes at all. Okay. So description can be locked or cannot be because that you know the creator is defining it. We don't have to. So whether all these things need, can be seen in the SOW or not, many of the things are not required for the buyer or the supplier. Those things which are not required, those things which are which needs to be kept uh, which needs to be kept undisclosed can be set to hide. So this is a review and submit. Okay, this is something which we have created in the first two steps. Starts from type, description, so we can view everything that's been defined, locked or unlocked. As well as your rules, revision rules, characteristic rules. See, for all those things, it's it's the functional stuff which comes into the picture. So we need to understand the functionalities. We need to understand uh, the functionalities of the field class and its terminologies. And we need to, on the other end, understand the business requirements from the buyer. And by doing that, we can we can easily decide what needs to be inputted, what needs to, what needs not need thought to be, what need, what can be seen and what should not be. Okay, so by this I'm gonna submit. By submitting this, a new SOW type will be created, and this SOW type will be used in the, the process of creating a template. Okay, so it is uh, in, in, uh, in complete terms, you know, it's not, creation is not a challenge. The technicalities of creation is not a challenge. This is, uh, when it comes to the implementation more than the technical part, it's, the functional stuff that we need to understand. Okay, so if, if someone who are who have worked with MSPs, if someone who have worked with uh, probably the administration part of SOW at least, so they would be having that idea. But yes, when if it is an implementation project, you know, it's not like one or two who will be handling it. There'll be a whole lot of people. Yeah, there will be seniors who will be coordinating with the uh, buyers, that's when juniors will understand what, what should be done. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel it. I'm not gonna create that, but yes, even creating is not a problem. Uh, and then we can go ahead and delete it. So similarly, they have used three here. The other one is standard. This, this comes from uh, the field glass itself. So you can go through this, try to understand any one of them, probably, you know, you will, this will be clear for you guys. If you want, you know, I can go through two of them and see how it's been defined, the template configuration, uh, clauses and characteristics, SOW rules. See, now that, you know, we are quite familiar with the terminologies, you can understand this. Okay, so this, this lock, what does this lock mean? What is, 
what does this uh, undisclosure mean? It is it is something quite quite simple, I would say. It is more than everything. It's the functionality that we need to understand here. So go through this. This is the this is the task for you guys. Go through this. Understand this. Try to understand. So this is the SOW type. Now I go to SOW template. SOW templates are created as per the requirement. The type here defines the SOW type that's been used. Okay. This is the standard SOW type. I'm gonna open the SOW template. You can completely see. So these are the custom fields that's been created. Characteristic rules, SOW worker rules. So whatever you see there in the type, the most of things will be inherited from there. You wanna create a new, go ahead and create, select the type. So there are three types that's been defined here. So the three types are defined because they're using these characteristics, these rules for the different purposes. So for different purposes, they're using different set of rules, different set of characteristics. That's, a, that's the reason we have different types here. I'm gonna select any one of them. Name it. I can give the description here. Description in the sense it's a project description, any kind of project description as such. We can give it here. Defined by, it has come up here, it has populated here. Where is it coming from? See, this is from the SOW type. The yeah. type that have been selected, have selected this type as sourcing. So at the time of the creation, in the, in the creation process itself, in the type creation process itself, it's been clearly defined. Let me go back there. I went into sourcing. Now I'll go to sourcing. I'll see what it's been defined. It's defined by buyer and supplier. Can it be seen? Yes, it can be seen. It's not been locked. It's not been locked, I can make the changes. It's, it's not been hidden and I can see that there. So all this are set to optional. Of course, I see it there. There are certain things which been locked. I cannot make the changes for those. And many are hidden here. Because see, when it comes to the budget part, when it comes to the budget, when it comes to the SOW rules, it will not be visible there in the template. So they don't need to understand what is SOW rules, what is S revision rules, characteristic rules. See, all these rules doesn't need to be seen in the template. And hence, it's been all hidden. It's all hidden here. Okay, see, clause library, we can maintain the clause library. The clause libraries are the uh, laws that is governing to the temporary workers by region and by the company as well. Okay, so if we can set the clause library here. If events is used, event library and event hierarchy comes into the picture. We have got fee library. If fee is used, 
So normally what happens, you know, if they are using the rate codes and rate grids, I'll, I'll explain the rate structure when we get into that. If they're using that, they don't use the field fees library. Rather, they go with the rate structure. They'll select the rate structure. So management event library, if they want to maintain this management event library, they'll, they'll go ahead and do that. Questions library. It's the same explanation. I'm just uh, trying to show where you find things and how you can create. Okay, so the questions are exclusive for SWW bid because that's where the questions needs to be answered. No doubt, when the bid is sent, the creator can go ahead and ask the question, type in the question and ask it. However, these are built in. When this is built in, the very common questions can be created here so that you know he is not going to waste time. He's going to just put it across to get the answer. So we saw the SWW type and SWW template. We saw the SWW worker, the roles, the different roles that we see. So these are the roles that the SOW workers will be having. No other role apart from the roles that been set here. For each role, we need to have the suppliers that are, that are supporting to those roles. Okay. How they do this, we create, we can create the role. So we can create the role and add it. When once added, we can add the suppliers into the role, the, the suppliers those are converting, those are supporting those roles to be filled up. Schedule library, if they're using it, they can, you can go ahead and create the schedule library if they're using any schedules as such. But yes, if they are paying on the schedule terms to the supplier. But yes, whether it is schedule, management events, events, fee, it all depends upon the buying company, whether they want it or not. Okay, so this is, this completes the SWW module. We understood how it functions. We understood how it is configured. We understood some of the major roles and fields that needs to be set in. Okay, so what all you need to do is get into the system and get some idea about it. And done. Okay, so the remaining things, you know, it is, we need to understand that from the buyer company. So it's been set up like this in one particular company. It can be marginally different in other company, but not completely different. Because when it comes to the basic functionalities, on top of it, some of the custom functionalities will also be matching with many of the companies. 